On behalf of Pastor and Lady Ming and the Retrieve Your Life family, we welcome you to Retrieve Your Life Ministries, a church that is looking up, reaching out, and caring for all. Let's join today's service, which is already in progress. Good morning. Good morning. We must search the scriptures daily, but we must act more what we search. Condemnation never change anything. What is judgment? What is blessing? Both are functions of seed, time, and harvest. Let's look at two scriptures that make this very plain. Jesus said in Mark 4.30 through 32. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seed that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all the earth and shoots out great branches so that the fowl of the air may lodge under the chapter of it. Now look at Galatians 6, 7, and 8. Be not deceived, God is not mine. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. For he said, for he that sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit shall the Spirit reap life everlasting. This is just the way it is. No one can change the spiritual law. So to change the outcome, one must change the seed. The law is at the root of everything. Everything you have today is the result you sold yesterday, good or bad. If it's bad, repent and change the seed. If it's good, increase the seed. Of course, the primary seed is the Word of God in our mouth, followed by corresponding action of faith. Faith, words, bring it harvest of blessing. On the other hand, word of doubt and unbelief followed by action of fear bring a harvest of judgment. Remember now, this law applies to everything in life. Take, for example, voting in an election. Your ballot is your seed. Voting is a God-given right and a blessing for every American citizen. But when it is sown in the flesh, its harvest is corruption. For instance, to no one vote for someone who is for abortion make you an accomplice to murder. However, to vote is the same thing because you did nothing to stop it. Why is marijuana now legal in several American states? Because the Christian didn't vote. Now people are dying because of it. What's the answer? Repent, pray, and vote in every election. When you pray and inquire of the Lord for whom you shall vote, and then obey his instructions, you will well take care of our even if the person you voted for is an elector. Notice, I said to inquire of the Lord. That means listen to him, not just to what's being said on TV. Pay attention to the Spirit. The Holy Spirit will show you everything you need to know.
take the time to listen. This time, very well spent. Expect John 16, 13, 15 to come to pass. Harvest, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive all mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore say, I that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. So we are encouraged to pray for everything. We talk of all the things that's going on. And we know it's different from even, say, five years ago. Everything is real different now. All the crime and stuff. But we all must pray for it. Thank God for everything. We thank Him that we could bring everything in prayer. Thank you for all we've done. And pray. Amen. It's prayer time. Father God, we thank you this morning, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you just for being you. You're so awesome, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you in the greatest praise. We can just say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, because we don't deserve anything that you give us, Heavenly Father. We are dirty, filthy rags, Heavenly Father, and we thank you for cleaning us up, Heavenly Father. Lord, as we come to you this morning, Heavenly Father, we ask that you forgive us for everything that we've done, known and unknown, Heavenly Father, up to this point. Lord, we thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, because someone's not getting up this morning, Heavenly Father. But Lord, we thank you that you woke us up, Heavenly Father. We thank you. We thank you just because you're so awesome, Lord. We thank you for the activities of our limbs, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you because we can look out windows, Heavenly Father. Someone just has to lie on their bed, Heavenly Father, and wait on their death day, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for keeping us, Lord, for making a way for us, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask your continuous blessings over RYLM, Heavenly Father. Lord, we're going to continue to give you praise, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask you to renew our hearts, Heavenly Father. Give us the strength and the ability and to think about you, Heavenly Father, and to go in the direction that you show us, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for our children this morning, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask that we be better parents to our children and our grandchildren, Heavenly Father. Lord, let us teach them the way, Heavenly Father. Sometimes we get lost, Heavenly Father, but we ask you to renew our strength in you, Heavenly Father, so we can introduce them to your son, Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father, so they can have a relationship with you, Lord. And we thank you on this day, Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask you to go into the nursing homes, Heavenly Father, and heal, Heavenly Father, in your will, Lord. That's what we ask, Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask that you go out into this dying nation, Heavenly Father, and rejuvenate these churches, Heavenly Father. Those that's in sin, Heavenly Father, I ask that you forgive them, Heavenly Father, and slap them with a renewal of you, Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask that they not deviate from the word that you gave them for your people today, Heavenly Father. And Lord, I ask that the people that the message is for, Heavenly Father, let them have an ear to hear and a heart to do it, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you on this day because you are so awesome, Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask you to continue to go into the penitentiary, Heavenly Father, and just bless, Lord. Lord, I ask that your word be spread all over this nation, Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask that you bless our president this morning, Heavenly Father, and his family, Heavenly Father. Lord, I just thank you for these holy grounds that we walk on, Heavenly Father, because I know if it wasn't for your son, Jesus Christ, dying on the cross, Lord, where would I be, Heavenly Father? Lord, I just thank you right now. Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
Lord, for saving us, Heavenly Father. Thank you for saving us from ourselves, Heavenly Father. Lord, I thank you because some of us was towed up from the floor of Heavenly Father. But Lord, you can put a renewal on our lives, Heavenly Father. Let us show somebody that was doing the same thing that we were doing, Heavenly Father. Show them that you can do it to them also, Heavenly Father. Lord, I thank you for testimonies, Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask that we don't sit down on our testimonies, Heavenly Father. Let them know that you are the one, Heavenly Father, and what they you did for us, you can do it for them too, Heavenly Father. Lord, I just thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask all these and other blessings in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I give my all to you with only nothing. You know, this morning, I just, I've been so feeling the spirit of the Lord in this place. I, I, you know, you know, all, you all know I'm going to tell a good joke like everybody else. I like to have a little humor. But today I'm not going to tell a joke. I just want to just praise God for a moment. That song, with only nothing, I, I, I give my all. You know, have, have you ever thought about just giving everything you have, your, your, your entire being, to Him? Without all the nonsense, without all the facades, without all the, the fakeness, without all the imitations, have you just sat down and just said, Lord, take me. I'm yours. You know, it takes a, it takes a strong person to, to just give themselves over to someone else. And no better, no better place person to do it to but God. Can't nobody do you like the Lord. Nobody. No one. Nothing. Can't nobody do. We always talk about God is good. And people say all the time. And all the time. God is good. But then when it comes to you to depend upon God. You and your feelings. What happens to God is good all the time. Mm -hmm. exactly. See, we need to give God praise. The Spirit of God is walking in this place this morning, and God, He just want to hear from, He wants to receive worship this morning. Amen. Amen. just for a moment on hold and just worship him. Even if it's just for a brief second. You know, it's almost like just holding your breath for five seconds and just give it all to him. Because the breath that you take is not yours but his. With only nothing, I give it all to you. God is awesome. Yes, he is. Without God, people in this world really are, don't realize, you know, how, how good God truly is. We would have been blessed, St. Louis, Missouri. Did anybody know that there was a snowstorm in Chicago yesterday? Mm -hmm. That they got 11 inches of snow? <laughs> and just uh, a few miles from them in Grays Lake, uh, Illinois, they got 16.6 inches of snow. Wow. And we were down here yesterday crying about the rain. <laughs> <laughs> then when the snow was snowing, oh, it's snowing. <coughs> the snow was just hitting us in the face and just melting when it hit the ground. <coughs> See, what if you were in Chicago? Wow. Or Gray's Lake? Or in South Dakota where they got 18 inches? Mm. In Sioux City. Sioux City, Iowa got... <laughs> 10 no, no, 11 inches. They got another 11 inches. Mm. All the states are right there. They're on the borders of Missouri. We were, we were blessed. Mm. Yes, amen. Mm. And nobody gave God praise. <laughs> Thank you. We, was, we were worried about the rain and the snow and the cold. Oh, it's cold out here. Oh, the rain. My God. <clears throat> What would, what would happen if God had just let it continue to rain? Until next week. And when we again we start seeing people's houses rolling down the street. God is good. 
And he's good all the time. Yeah. So when you start saying that, remember how good he really is. Don't just say it as if, you know, because everybody else says it. <laughs> See, we, we need to learn that when we, when we mention God, we got to mean it. That's right. If God is going to be good all the time to you, realize that. If you're going to stand there and say all the time he's good, know that. If you can't trust God, who can you trust? Because every last one of y'all got trust issues. <laughs> Amen. 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 Especially when it comes to a man, I can't trust that for the life of me, as far as I can see him. Amen. Because, you know, I had, to, I had to beg you for an amen on that one, huh? Amen, <laughs> Pastor. <laughs> See, because truth is, we all have feelings. See, that's what I'm saying. For just for a brief moment, put your life on hold. Just, just for a little while, put your life on hold. And listen to God. Listen to God today as he speaks. Put your life on hold. Don't worry about what's going on in your life. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't even worry about this evening or this afternoon. Just focus on the word. Amen? Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as we stand before you this morning, God, we just thank you, God. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. God, we thank you for the gifts that you bestowed upon members in our congregation. Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise, and that's that you receive our worship this morning. And Lord, let me stand behind the cross right now and just remove myself. Speak through me, Lord, and let the people of God hear your voice. These are no things you ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Emmanuel. 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 If you return your Bible to the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter. This is my Bible. Amen. This is my Bible. The Word of God in whom I will trust. Amen. Thank you, lady. Thank you, lady. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, starting at verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 4. Chapter 4 starting at verse... Uh, 1 Peter chapter 4 starting at verse 7. Amen. And I'm reading out the NIV. 1 Peter chapter 4 starting at verse 7. The end of all things is near. Wow, could have stopped right there for real. All right. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they, do, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. 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 Seated in the presence of God. Amen. Briefly, shortly, all we want to talk about this morning and share with you all is every day. Every day. Every day we have something going on in our lives, don't we? Huh? Yes. Yes. Yeah, you know, some people say, Pastor, you just don't know. Every day is a struggle. Yes, sir. Well, you know, let me, let, me, let, me, let me educate you on something. Every day is a struggle because God is, is, has, has a need. He wants you to be dependent. And not upon yourself, not upon your BFFs, not upon your spouse. He wants you to be dependent on him. This is why we have to go through life struggles. This is why we have to go through trials and tribulations every day. Every day. There's not going to be a day you're not going to face sin. There's not going to be a day you're not going to face lust or whatever. There's not going to be a day. Every day there's going to be something that's going to stand in your way. How do you uh, get over or approach trying to resolve your day-to-day -day issues? I'm glad y'all asked that question. We're going to look at three little points briefly 
And I hope you all realize and get something that, get something out of this every day. And then again, like I was saying earlier, just for this brief moment, put your problems, your life, just put it on hold. Hit the pause button just for a minute. Amen? Amen. Amen. Point number one, be ready every day. See, we have to be serious. We have to be watchful. And we have to pray. Because the thing, the end of things is near. Y'all don't realize that, I don't think. He said, it, he said, he said in the word, the end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. How many people are really truly praying? Amen. How many people are truly uh, alert and sober? How many people believe that the end is all near, is near? Yes. Amen. All you have to do is look around you. All you have to do is look at world events. Yes. And I'm gonna tell you something. I'm getting so I almost shut down my Facebook page because I'm getting so sick and tired of folks with this this, this friends thing. Quick and praying France and, and Africa. I'm tired of it. There's no comparison. Africa is Africa and France is France. Right. Amen. I'm a Christian and a, and, a, and a child of God. I support whoever God made. That's right. Now, if somebody puts them out there about Africa, I support Africa. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, why everything got to be so negative? Yeah. Every time I turn around, I turn around this morning, they talk about Nigeria now. <laughs> Baby, let me tell you something. When, where, where is that not poverty in Africa? That's right. See, we all know what happened every day. They didn't went over there and they just they didn't just raped Africa is what they did. Yes. Praise the Lord. You know, people don't, anybody ever heard of Sierra Leone? Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. The richest place on the face of the earth. That's right. <laughs> I hope y'all heard what I said. The richest place on the face of the earth, but the people are poor. Are poor. Wow. Woman got it in her backyard, dug it up out of her backyard, in her backyard now, 125 carat diamond. I wonder how much she got for that. Right. In her backyard. The ground over there is full of minerals. It's rich. See, when I say rich, everybody think about money. But the ground, that, that, that country, that soil, everything over there is rich with all kind of minerals that man wants. Diamonds, gold. They want that. And they, 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 they prey on that. And now you have all these big corporations going over there. They digging. And they take it up everything, right? And they're just raping the land. We're, we're sitting here focusing on uh, France and the refugees and all that. And then we temporarily take our, our focus off of Syria. Right? <laughs> Hello. Better read your word. <laughs> You know, man is trying to get us up. No, let, let, let's get them off of Syria because, you know, it's, it's getting a little too hot over there. They tell me we're afraid of the Syrians. We're afraid of the refugees coming in. Now, I'm afraid of what y'all finna do over there in Syria because I just want to make sure Syria ain't finna fall. <laughs> now, until I hear about Damascus, I'm good. <laughs> but anything ever happens in Damascus, y'all better get ready. <laughs> Cause they ain't gonna be there. He ain't already told you his word. And this is why he says, be serious. Watch and pray. Be serious about the word of God. Be serious about your connection with him. Be serious about your Christianity. Be watchful. Watch everything around you. Pay attention. My wife always tell me I don't watch the news, but I, I peep at it every now and then. I don't watch it on TV, but it'd be all kind of news on Facebook because they put it out there. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and if I don't get it from there, I got, I got, I got my little CNN uh, tab that I go to. Just look at CNN. CNN always on top of the news. I don't have to sit there and watch Channel 4. But every day, people need to realize it's time you need to be on the alert. You have to take this, you have to take this serious. You have to take the word of God serious. Because the word don't lie. 
We understand how truthful the word is, but nobody pays attention to the word. Because we're so conf we're so so focused on our lives and what's what what's going on in our lives right now. Our little world. Let me tell you something. Your little world is just like this, like like Earth. God is like this. He's like Jupiter. Have you ever seen the put Earth and Jupiter together and seen how, how uh, the comparison of the two? Jupiter is much larger. And our God is much larger than us. So every day, be mindful. Pray. And he said, you know, be alert and of, and of sober mind. Amen. 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 Put the bottle down. Yeah. Put the pipe down. Yeah. Put the needles down. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It, it's, it's, time, it's, time, it's time for a cleanup. That's right. It's time, you know, I, 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 I have friends of mine that, that's in my age group, and, and, and uh, they still get high. This is not 1972, 68. This is 2015. Has anybody ever change? What does the word change mean to you every day? Without change, what happens? You remain the same. Remain the same. Have you ever thought about without change, you die? See, when I change, y'all talk about changing your life. I'm talking about your spirit. Okay. I'm talking about the one that's, that, 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 that's inside of you. See, quit worrying about that outer shell. That thing is going to die anyway. You better start trying to change your attitude and your spirit on the inside. There has to be some change. If there's no change, you die. Why do you think we always talk about there's so many dead men walking? <laughs> and we ain't talking about those in the penitentiary. Come on. I'm talking about right out here, right out here on Finn, Vanderbilt, wherever you live. Dead man walk. You may be one of the dead men walking. Come on now. <laughs> teach, Pastor, teach. Because your spirit is not growing. See, we've been talking about spiritual growth on Wednesday nights. Spiritual growth on Wednesday nights. Spiritual growth on Wednesday nights. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Because without spiritual growth and no change in you, you're going to die. Spiritually. And if your spirit is dead, what? I mean, let's just, let's just be realistic about this. If your spirit is already dead, where do you think you're going when that shell die? It's not like, you know, you, you, you got a ticket into heaven. On a greyhound. Huh? You can't, you can't run your run down there and get an Amtrak and get a one way. <laughs> You might well get a round trip if your spirit hasn't changed. That's right. Because you, you know, you, you get a good, you're just, just going to visit heaven. Because you ain't getting in. You just, I guess you're just going to see what it looked like. <laughs> every day, be ready. Point number two, be responsive every day. In verse, verse, verse 8 and 9, he said, check this out, check this out. He said, Above all, oh my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, Peter, you are something else. L love each other deeply, deeply, <laughs> because love covers over a multitude of sins, and Lord knows you all have a multitude of sins, from the pulpit to the top. To the top. He said, love each other deeply. Be responsive every day, you all. Now, how many of us can truly say to ourselves, we, we, we go out and we just love on one another every day? Every day. I can't even tell that lie. I'm here to tell you right now. I can't. 
I can't stand up here for you. I say, I love I, every day. I'm, I'm just loving the people of God. I love them. I, I just, I'm just showering them and showing them just all, just all love. The, I be lying. The devil is like, cause I be lying just like him. Cause there's no way. I, I'm, I'm just talking about me. That I go out every day and I love on the people of God every day. Help me, cause I need some work in that department. I really do. I have to learn to be responsive every day. In order for me to be responsive, I need to first of all be responsible. That's right. You've put me in a position and called me to do something, then I need to sort of be responsible for what you call me to. And as Christians, the Bible says, as Peter is trying to tell us, above all, love each other deeply. Don't be, don't be, don't, don't, don't be giving no people no that, that fake love. You know that, that you know that fake stuff y'all be giving out of your time. You know somebody you don't like or something. You know call yourself. Well, I'm just, I'm just gonna be cordial. Right. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Good to see you. No, you're lying. And your man saying, what they, what, 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 what they here for? Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. I mean, somebody's here right now. <laughs> Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Uh oh. Whole lot of y'all can use you deep practice that way. Offer hospitality without, you know, without saying something behind it. That's right, sir. Stop calling me. All the way over calling me. He could have got that done. We go get it. Or do what is needed or what is required, but then we we mumbling and grumbling behind it. How many of y'all done it? You know, you always got something to say. And so, how 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 real is your hospitality if you got to grumble and mumble behind it? Behind it. How can people receive your your true hospitality? Now, they may receive it and may not know because, you know, you got the little fake smile on your face and everything else. But God knows. Amen. And God knows you was fake that day. And guess what? He did like this. Hmm. November the second, huh? Fake hospitality. Okay. So then you know you die and you stand before the Lord. And he opens up the book of life on you. On November the 22nd, you do remember that day, don't you? You know, it was just yesterday because, you know, because of what you did, I just brought you on home. Oops. And he dreamed of that fake hospitality. He said, no, no, Lord, I, I, they didn't know about it, but he did. See, we got to be responsive. We have to be responsible for who we are. We can't be we can't be showering folks with fake love. If your love ain't real, don't give it. Come on now. Just don't give it. Be be one as y'all say. You put it on you know, with a little tag. I still ain't figured out how to do that. The little tag on, on Facebook say one hundred. <laughs> keep it one hundred. That's what they always say. They keep it one hundred. Keep it 100 with God. That's right. I, matter of fact, I don't know why you don't keep it 100 with him. I ain't no sense you trying to lie and hide from him. Right. That's the main one you need to keep it 100 with. Yeah. Christian folk. Saved. Sanctified. Right. Full of the Holy Ghost folk. <laughs> <laughs> huh? And he quick to tell you that too. <laughs> I'm saved. Sanctified. You ain't said the part, you still with the devil. And full of the Holy Ghost, you full of, I ain't gonna tell you. <laughs> I'm just saying. Be responsible. Every day. Don't see, don't just show your love on, on, on Monday. Right. He said be responsive every, every day. day. Ain't that what we're talking about? The, the, the title is every day. Amen. Now someday. <laughs> Not Sunday, right. Tuesday, right. huh? Maybe Wednesday. I don't even see y'all on Wednesday. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, let's let's go.
go Wednesday. Wednesday? <laughs> Wednesday. We can stay with Wednesday now, thank you, though. <laughs> every day. See, we got to be responsible every day. You know, you know what I'm saying is, be responsive to God every single day of your life. I know it's hard. Don't get me wrong. I know it's a challenge. It ain't like you haven't faced any challenges before. It's not like you haven't faced any struggles in your life before. See, this is what gets me with people. We find the struggles in our life and all the addictions or whatever we have going on in our life, we find that a struggle. But we don't feel like the, 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 the follow the Lord is easy. All you got to do is cross over. And people say, that's just so hard to do. Why? It's hard to do because that's what you choose not to do. That's what I love about the Lord. Every day he gives you a choice. Yes. He, gives you the, he gives you the right and the option to choose. <laughs> God is so good that, you know, who, who, your boss on your job don't even give you a choice. <laughs> Amen. Hello. When they say they want A, B, and C done, and you don't think A, B, and C, D is right, and you don't like to do it, but what you do? Because you don't have no choice. <laughs> so you say, well, you know, I got to do it. If I don't do it, I'm, I'm, I might lose my job. Okay, and who gave you that one? Maybe, you know, Patrick, without well, a job, you can't pay no bills. And, you know, lights off and everything. Well, baby, if you pay your light bill, they wouldn't be off. <laughs> I can't understand how people can can can, can be on, on, on Section 8 and everything, and, and get, you know, the rent ain't, ain't, ain't nothing. And then somebody six months behind. Mm. Mm. If you stop going about Jordan's. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Preach on. That's right. Stop going about all that Tommy. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And go to Walmart. There you go. Okay. Budget. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You be able to pay your bills. <laughs> Every day. Every day. <laughs> you got to be responsible. Come on now. Every day. Every day. <laughs> Don't come to the church saying, uh, uh, y'all helping with, with, with lectures. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> and you come in here dressed to the nines. Come on. Right. Come on now. Gold chain, big, big gold earrings are hanging out your ear. Do it. <laughs> Again, I, I'm going to tell you, I used to, I'm I used to work at the welfare office on, when it was on, on Grand and Lindell uh, years ago. I, I, what, what was it? In the 90s, amen. When I first got out of the military. So anyway, I was there and I was I was I was I was, I was working with a client of mine. And they, when I got through, when I finished my, my supervisor got on, I told him I didn't care anyway. But anyway, he told me, she, she was sitting there telling me that she needed this and that, and, and, and can I give her some stamps and then she wanted to go on general relief and all this. And I'm like, I'm looking at her like, you coming here with a brand new hairdo. You got gold hanging all off your neck. She had rings on every finger. Big dangling gold earrings. I said, take all that gold off and go pine it. <laughs> and she said, what did you say? I said, take that gold off and go pine it. You said, I said, you take it with people that really need this. Get, I said, get out of my line. <laughs> she went to turn me in. <laughs> and they asked me, did I tell her that? And I told them, yes, yeah. I did. You know, since me lying. Mm -hmm. And they say, Mr. Mean, you just can't do that. Why not? I thought we was down here to give the people that was in need. I said, I got clients that are that are on Social Security, and they can barely make it. Uh, you know, you, you got a Part B and Part A with Medicare and all that. And I got I got clients that's down there, and you know they got they got to make, they get they only get like six hundred a month, and then you tell me that's too much. They can't give a ten dollars. And then you're going to let this person come in here dressed to the nines with about seven, eight hundred dollars worth of jewelry on, and you're going to tell me I got to give her a whole book, a whole stamp, and then give a general relief to? I'm not doing it. I know that's right. And he told me, he said, you know what? With that kind of attitude, you won't last long. I said, you know what? You're right, because I won't be here long. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> so I still had that attitude, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Every day. Right. Every day. <laughs> Just tell you. Chuck we have to be responsible. Chuck a wood, Chuck you got to, you have a choice to make that God has given you each and every day of your life. He gives you a choice to make. Every day Satan coming at you. And each and every last one of you, as you continue to grow spiritually and you growing in Christ, Satan is coming at you even more. Your kid is going to look like little devils. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna think they when they start running at you. <laughs> Grandkids. Man, getting on my nerves. Now I'm like, I'm trying to figure out why is this boy getting on my nerves so much? And normally he don't. And I, all day yesterday he just on and on. And I still remember to tell him, just shut up. Get out my, go on upstairs with your mom. But I just sat there and I started thinking about it. I said, Lord, Lord, reading this, I'm like, every day. You right, Lord, every day. He's coming at you every day. Every day. You have got to be responsive. You have got to be responsible. You have got to have real love for one another, deeply as the word of God says. You have got to be hospitable without mumbling and grumbling when you do something for someone else. Even when you don't feel like doing it and you have to do it, don't mumble about it. Don't grumble about it. Just, just be hospitable. Everyone in there has a gift that, uh, that God has given called hospitality. We may not practice it in the proper way, but you have that gift. You ought to try exercising it sometimes. People of God. Point number three, and I'm done, let you go. Be responsible. Use your gifts to serve others. Wow. He said, each of you should use whatever gifts you receive to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in the various forms. I just got to talk about every last one of y'all got a gift for being responsible. And how many of y'all are sitting on your gifts? God is calling you all to work. You know God is calling you all to work, but everybody just want to just sit around and come to church every Sunday and don't do nothing in the church. And I ain't just talking about retrieving your life. That's the every church. That's, that's everywhere you go. I don't care where you go. You're going to have people that ain't doing jack. That's right. That's why most pastors always talk about, they always talk about, I try to preach on the 80-20. Only 20% doing all the work. Mm -hmm. I don't care how small or how big your church is. The church of God has to be responsible. Because he told you, use your gifts. You have gifts. Use them. Put them to good use. Stop letting them just sit there and be dormant. You have a God that is, God, is, he just graced you with a, a magnificent gift. I don't know what gifts you have, but you do. Just talking about hospitality. Some of y'all got gifts of hospitality. Use it. Working in the church. The church needs nurses. That's hospitality. And we got people in here with hospitality, but they ain't finna use it. Uh, no, 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 that, that, that just ain't my gift. That ain't, that ain't for me. Keep on doing what I did and not, not, not follow what God wants you to do. It's going to get painful, I'm going to tell you right now. It's going to get painful. Because he told you, use the gift that, and that's faithful stewards of God's grace in various forms. Use your gift faithful. It's like the ushers. I, you know, if any of us ever came, you know, came, people walked in and then they don't give them a smile. I, I, I tell you, you need to sit down. You need to sit down. You, 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 ain't no sense you being up there at the door because when you come in, last thing I want to see when I walk through the door is another. I'm already, I'm already seeking help. Last thing I want to see is somebody with a frown. <laughs> That's right. That's the truth. is the first. Line. That's the first line of defense right there. That's what people see first and foremost. If you can't have a smile on your face when I open the door, I don't think I want to go in here. <laughs> Oh, if I'm in another church, that's full of hell. That's full of hell. Yeah, I catch that one on the way home. <laughs> Verse 11, he said, if anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. Learn from now on, learn when, every day when you open your mouth, speak. 
The very words of God. Stop cussing. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Stop negative. So not stop the negativity. Amen. Amen. If you can't use the faithful words of God, when he tells you if anyone speaks, speak the very words of God. If anyone serves, all you that serve, serve and do so with the strength that God provides. If you usher, smile. Smile even when you don't feel like smiling. You think I like to smile at y'all every day? Heck no. You think I like to smile at y'all every Sunday when I come in here? Heck no. There's some days I walk in here and I see some of y'all, I'll be like, what else? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> you think I'm, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. It's called discernment because I see I first of all already received and felt you and it ain't real. You're going through the motions. Oops, ouch, thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord on that one. <laughs> oh my. Use your words for the word of God. Stop all, stop all the filth and, and all that nonsense that comes out of your mouth. From the pulpit to the door, that includes myself. Because I know I have some words every day that ain't got no business being in my mouth. Hey. Amen. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. I'm still, I'm, you know, we, we, all, we, all, we all say, you know, uh, well, uh, God ain't through with me yet. He ain't through with none of us yet. But it is our responsibility to start trying to make a change. So don't use God ain't through with you yet. We, we know God ain't through with you yet. He ain't through with nobody. If he was, you wouldn't be here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Be responsible. Use your gifts. We have some very talented, gifted individuals in this congregation that can do so many things. But yet, I think people are afraid to use the gifts that God has given them. And why would you be afraid of something that God gave you? I didn't give it to you. <laughs> God gave it to you to serve him, not me. Not this church. He gave it to you to serve him. I'm just a vessel. I'm just the authority that God has planted. Stop your negativity. Stop your negative words. You know how some of y'all talk about the pastor when you know him under your breath when you're leaving out the door as I'm preaching. <laughs> <laughs> you know the devil get on your head. I'm just saying. You all, you all know. Be ready every day, you all. Be responsible every day. And be responsible every day. Amen. 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 Emmanuel. 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 Emmanuel.